terms of communication with students. So I tried to pair my support also with like clear um, and concise instructions around who am I as an instructor? What do I expect out of you? So saying like, these are my goals for the course. These are what I'm hoping you get out of the course. These are what I expect from you. Um, and then saying like, here's what you can expect from me. Um, and in that expectation, saying what they can expect from me in terms of like email communication, saying that I will get back to you within 24 hours. That's my promise to you as your instructor. Um, telling them that um, my door is open for, um, you know, office hours, please come. If there's an activity or like a new piece of homework that I have them do, I like to very clearly lay out my expectations so they know exactly what I want them to do. Because the worst thing you can do is assume that they do understand exactly what this assignment is for and like the goals behind it and what you're expecting. Even though they don't have the background that would tell them what they should do or what they should expect. So it's really important to lay out your expectations. It was important for me to consider how I can um, communicate things that I learned a while ago to students in a clear and effective way and trying to empathize with and think about where I was at when I was in their shoes sitting in class. And so not that you're gonna take um, every experience like you would have done um, and been in the same shoes as all of the students that you're gonna teach, but just that it was useful for me to try to think through um, how would I have appreciated um, hearing and being taught this information? And then also thinking through what is your student going to be entering that room feeling? You know, we can be really disconnected from what it was like to be students, but just trying to take some time. And even if you have access to undergrads that you do research with and stuff, asking them what that class reputation is potentially or what that class um, uh, sentiment is and and where students tended to need support can be really helpful and that's something you could even ask the instructor of record as well. Students can tell when you really care, when you're really interested in them as individuals and in their perspectives, right? Um, and in how you listen to their contributions and also how you help other students listen to their contributions. I also tend to try to get to know my students more and communicate that I'm interested in getting to know them more in the beginning of the course. So I have done this in different ways. I've done index cards on the first day of class where I have asked students, you know, the questions that we would ask when we're going around and kind of introducing ourselves, but I want to hold that for myself so I remember who they are. And then also asking them what brings them to that class and communicating that's okay to be honest about that, um, but just wanting to know what what is bringing students into my classroom. And then I also um, have sometimes asked questions in this way around, you know, what are you most excited to learn in this class and what are you... Um, what are your concerns about being a student in this class? And, and really getting a clear sense of their, um, who they are, what they're bringing into the classroom. We all know that people learn best when they feel like they are in a place where they belong, where they feel respected. And there are a lot of structures in academia and elsewhere where marginalized people are not gonna necessarily feel like they belong in this classroom. And so there are things as a teaching assistant that you can do to create a more inclusive classroom and to really facilitate learning of all of your students. Even, even as a teaching assistant, you, you still have the power to make people feel that they belong and that they're supported. The fact of the matter is we have a number of marginal populations in our classrooms. UVA is a largely white, affluent, and middle class. And so when you have students who are students of color, especially black or brown, when you have students from rural backgrounds or you know, other kinds of backgrounds where they feel marginal uh, or marginalized, uh, it can make them more reticent, like less willing to speak up. And you have to be fairly intentional to make sure those voices are heard. So one of the ways to improve students' sense of belonging is to let them get to know you and if you have any points where you're underrepresented, make sure you share those with your students. For example, um, I often tell my students on the first day that um, I'm also a first-generation college student. Being a first-generation college student is I didn't really understand what office hours were. I thought um, you would only go to those if like you absolutely couldn't figure something out. I think I went to office hours maybe once in my entire college career. And that's not really how it should be. Office hours are there for students to um, come work through problems, uh, get the help they need. 
Rather than encouraging students to come to office hours, I simply make it mandatory that each student meets with me before the first half of the course is over to discuss their progress, um, for me to get to know them, for them to get to know me, to have that individualized instructor time um, that's so important. And I've done that because I've found that it's the students who are most comfortable sharing in class, the students who already feel they have good access to me. They're the ones who usually come to office hours if I simply encourage students to come. Um, so by kind of demystifying what coming to office hours means, I'm hoping to allow students who maybe aren't familiar with what office hours are or don't feel comfortable reaching out um, to me to, to actually get them um, the, the service that they, that they deserve. So during my office hours, I like to get to know my students a little bit better um, while we are discussing materials related to the course uh, or homework questions because I think it's important to understand uh, beforehand uh, what level they're at in the course, if they are feeling overall comfortable with the course or if they're struggling with certain concepts. Acknowledging our own identities, you know, and acknowledging who do our students um, perceive us to be. Do they perceive us to be part of this structure that has not always been inclusive of who they are? I'm a first generation college student. and I'm also half Latina. That is not what I know that's not what students perceive me as and I need to have that awareness when I go into the classroom. I tend to um, think through how might how might my classroom and my course um, have been a, a, a conduit for and put for um, having students not feel safe and respected or having populations of people in the world not feel safe and respected. Um, and then how can I um, communicate to my students that, that, that I'm not okay with that, that that's not, the, not something that I want to be a part of. Another way to foster inclusivity is to model it and to model transparency yourself, uh, which can be really challenging uh, because we often walk a line between wanting to respect and value the contributions of every student, even as we're also trying to push uh, certain ideas and concepts as being true, right? So, for example, in my case, talking about race and ethnicity, especially in this time, you want to give space for everyone's voices, but you also want to affirm that there is such a thing as systemic and institutional racism, uh, no matter what students may think. We also need to name what's going on in our community because our students are bringing in a lot of things from the outside world into our classrooms, and we can't ask them to leave it at the door, nor should we, because often the things that we learn in class whether it's in the content or just in relational aspects, how we run the course, are things that are applicable to those events in the outside world. And I think that that will be really important this year um, after the summer of 2020 and the protests and Black Lives Matter and police violence and, and COVID-19. So many things have happened in our community that we're gonna need to name with our students. And in that way, it is creating um, it is helping to create an inclusive learning environment because it's letting students know that we won't keep this quiet in this course.